Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu, and joining me on this edition is a very, very special guest. It's none other than Gostandinos Llanos from the Daily Express. Gostandinos, welcome to the show, my friend. Uh, first of all, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much for inviting me, Harry. A, a, a big good morning and a big hello to your listeners. Great stuff, great stuff. Costandinos, I wanted to get your thoughts on a few Arsenal-related bits. Um, we've been reading a, a number of stories over the last couple of days, um, and the one that's really gripped the Arsenal fan base is that saying that Freddie Lundberg has lost the faith of the players. Now, Freddie Lundberg, of course, took over from Unai Emery, and, and I think we all agree that a change had to be made the Arsenal fans hoped for a new manager bounce, as they call it. Something like what Everton uh, experienced at the weekend when Duncan Ferguson took over. You know, a legend coming in. Could he give them a kick up the backside? That hasn't really happened, though, for whatever reason with Freddie Lundberg. What do you make of this story about him losing the dressing room? Are you buying it? And, and what do you think actually has gone on there? Well, I mean, before, um, actually when Unai Emery was sacked, uh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang went on record uh, praising Freddy Ljungberg and uh, expressing his confidence on, um, on him taking over. Uh, many, many months before that, Bukayo Saka also praised Freddy Ljungberg because he said that um, the dressing room, he, he, Bukayo Saka said that he specifically finds it easier to talk to Ljungberg about tactics and about orders that were given to Emery because, as we all know, uh, during Emery's reign, a lot of players found it quite hard to understand what he was trying to tell them, either because of his broken English or because of all those really long meetings that just dragged and dragged and dragged, and at some point they just lost their substance. Bukayo Saka said that he would then turn to Ljungberg, who spoke better English, who speaks better English, uh, to explain the, those tactics in a in an easier manner. And I got the feeling that a lot of other younger players who came up to the Arsenal Senior Club, thanks to Freddie Ljungberg's coaching, felt the exact same way. Of course, that Daily Star story we're talking about is because uh, Arsenal fans, Arsenal players, excuse me, uh, just wouldn't answer questions about whether or not they have confidence on Ljungberg talking about um, uh, what they think about Ljungberg's coaching. Um, I, f I feel like this is... Um, the, the, the issue is a lot more deep-rooted right now. Arsenal are in transition. Uh, the results are not coming in. That's obviously going to bring frustration no matter who the manager is. I believe the uh, match tonight against uh, West Ham is going to answer a lot of questions and it's going to clear up a lot of issues. That's at least my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a tough game. And, you know, West Ham United have had struggles of their own of late. There's no secret about that. But... It's Arsenal's away form that is the real concern. You know, Arsenal have won just one uh, away game in the Premier League this season. That came on the opening weekend up at Newcastle. And since then, it's been pretty much as you were, carrying on from last season and the season before in terms of our poor, poor uh, away form. For me, you know, Unai Emery got to the point where, where he had to go. The results weren't working. I don't think anybody was surprised to hear that he'd gone. I was in his last press conference um, after the Eintracht Frankfurt game and I, I thought you could see in his in his manner, in his look, that he knew it was his time was up. And, you know, there are reports that he was told before that and, and you know, we don't really know what went on. But for me, Freddie Lundberg came in and we hoped that there would be, you know, a lift uh, among the players, uh, among the squad. But as we keep saying, that hasn't really happened. And I guess if you're being fair, you've got to think about, you know, the fact that Unai Emery left the team in a really, really bad way. And and whether it was all necessarily his fault is a, a separate debate, but the team were in a very poor state. So to, for people to now sit there and blame Freddie Lundberg for that, I think is a little bit harsh. Would you not agree? I would agree with that, absolutely. And I would also, uh, when it comes to Unai Emery and the blame he carries... The thing is, I don't feel like Arsenal really learned from Manchester United's mistakes. Manchester United did not prepare the ground properly uh, when Ferguson left, and they knew Fergie was leaving. The, they, they did not prepare the ground well, and we're seeing the results right now. I don't think Arsenal really, really learned from that mistake, uh, because Arsene Wenger's successful philosophy and mentality 
is starting to fade uh, starting to fade away from Arsenal. The fact alone that a lot of key former Arsenal um, pers- uh, Arsene Wenger personnel is starting to um, to leave the club, starting to be re- is starting to be removed from the club. It just shows it there. Uh, so I think Unai Emery was uh, unlo- was unlucky in that regard. But of course he carries blame. I mean, I read the uh, I read stories that um, um, Emery would uh, just would not was not able to learn key Arsenal personnel's names. Like he didn't know who he was talking to in regards to backroom staff, important backroom staff. Uh, we talked about the long meetings that just dragged on. Uh, his poor English that, you know, of course, I mean, he comes from another country and you, know, you could understand that, but we could have found another way around. I was thinking, for example, like in, in those important meetings, maybe he could speak in Spanish and have a translator uh, bring, the, bring these orders in English. Uh, he lost the uh, dressing room. I mean, I read some um, shocking stories where after the Guimaraes, um, the Guimaraes uh, draw during the flight back home, um, Emery would sit in the front of the players behind him would, you know, would start, you know, mocking him, not, not to his face, but like to each other, like just trying to do his broken English. Uh, so, yeah, he carries um, some blame to it. But I feel like this is more deep rooted, as I said before, uh, we're in a transition period that is not being carried out properly. And, uh, and I, I feel like Arsene Wenger's mentality is fading away. And I, think, I feel like that's what the problem is. I mean, whoever takes over on a permanent basis, whether it's Ljungberg or someone as, as uh, a, a starter like Arteta or someone as experienced as Allegri, Arsenal need to show faith and patience. That's the name of the game for me, faith and patience, just like Liverpool did with Jurgen Klopp. Yeah, absolutely. You make some great points there. And I think the the problem with Arsenal here is that, you know, as from a fan's perspective, as somebody who, who's been going and watching the club for years, purely as a fan before I even became a journalist. And, you know, that wasn't so long ago. It was only, what, a year, uh, six months ago, a year ago, but you know, when I was purely a fan and only looked at it with that hat on. And what I would say is the Wenger days were very frustrating towards the end. People wanted change. Uh, and many people felt that the change in management would change the direction in which the club was travelling. But it's come to the light now that maybe the management wasn't the major problem at Arsenal Football Club. You know, the hierarchy have a lot to answer for. Ivan Gazid has made a lot of mistakes. We're looking now at an executive team of Raul Edu and, and Vinay who... You know, are they fit for purpose? We don't really know yet. They've not really had to do a great deal in terms of hiring a manager. This is their first sort of rodeo, as you say. And, and it looks like now we're going to learn a lot about them. We're going to learn a lot about the Cronkies' ambitions for Arsenal Football Club. Because I remember famously at the start of the season, during the summer, Josh saying, be excited. Well, we're four points above the relegation zone at the time of recording. What is there to be excited about? So you can understand why fans are frustrated. Moving on to, to Mikel Arteta, he seems to be one of the front runners, if we're going to believe what we've been reading in the last few days. A, a manager who, or he would be become a manager if he came to Arsenal, but he's not managed the team before. Famously, has been working under the brilliant Pep Guardiola. But in my opinion, Gostandinos, this is too much of a risk to take when Arsenal are in such a precarious position. Arsenal must return to the Champions League as soon as possible. And I feel like going down the proven route is probably the right route to go. What's your take on it? No, no, I agree. Uh, Miguel Arteta, in my opinion, would be a risk. I feel like, um, uh, I mean, Guardiola obviously praises him. I mean, and that is great, but there's a difference when you're the number two um, and you're, uh, and when you're the number two or, num- or the number one. When you're the uh, number two, at the end of the day, no one's going to turn to you if results go badly. No, no one has ever said, you know, uh, you know, the reason why the team's not doing well is because of that assistant manager. We need to get rid of him. No, if the team is, do- is going, if the results are not doing, uh, are not are not good, uh, everyone's going to point the finger of blame at you. It's it's a completely different ball game. In my opinion, Arteta should go and prove himself the same way Lampard, Frank Lampard did. Brilliant work at Derby then went to Chelsea, it was much of an easier transition. But then again, as I said, no matter who takes over at Arsenal, faith and patience is the name of the game. You said that Arsenal need to return to the Champions League. Of course, you're right. Arsenal are a Champions League team. That's the club we're talking about. That's the, that's the kind of success uh, Arsenal should be striving for, at least that kind of success. 
But in my opinion, now we're in for, for a transition period that could turn into quite a brutal affair. If I were an Arsenal fan, which technically I am, I mean, the Arsenal are my favorite team in England. I'm a Libyakos fan, but Arsenal are my favorite team in England. I feel like we need to prepare ourselves for a spell with no trophies and maybe even a spell with no Champions League football. They, we, I think we're in a transition period. Every, we, need, we need to show faith. We need to show patience. And, uh, we, uh, and, and you know, it's all about just getting, it, getting things right in the transition period, no matter who takes over. But hopefully the man who takes over, no matter who it is, will be the right man. Whether it is Arteta, someone who's never worked before, or Allegri, a proven winner, then, you know, let's hope it's the right man this time. Absolutely. I mean, for me, the frustration has not necessarily been from the fact that Arsenal, you know, Arsenal should have qualified for the Champions League last season. We had multiple opportunities. We missed out uh, via the league, which we should never have done, uh, given some of the results we picked up at the end of the season. It was a really, really poor run of form. We went into the, the Europa League final. We were absolutely embarrassed, which, you know, left a bad taste in the, the mouths of the Arsenal faithful and understandably so. But for me... The biggest concern is not seeing the progress. That That is where I'm struggling. It's not necessarily that we're not in the Champions League or that we're not challenging for the Premier League title. It's more a case of where is this club going? And at the moment, it looks like we're going backwards. That is the real issue. Mm. Now, a another name that is being heavily linked with, with the Arsenal uh, head coach's position is that of Marcelino, former Valencia boss, of course. He was uh, dismissed um, at the end of last season despite winning the Copa del Rey, despite uh, guiding them back into the Champions League. What do you make of that link? Is Marcelino somebody that Arsenal should be considering or will it be a, a, an underwhelming appointment in your eyes? Well, I mean, in my opinion, Marcelino to me wouldn't be on top of my short list. Um, the, the, the man who's on the top of my short list is Massimiliano Allegri, a proven winner, uh, a person who has taken so much out of uh, brilliant superstars for, uh, during his time at Juventus, also won the Serie A with Milan during you know, their last good years in the Serie A. Uh, I believe he should be the man, but of course that means that uh, Arsenal will have to wait until the summer because Allegri has insisted time and time again that he's going to carry out his sabbatical uh, until the uh, summer and complete... 12 months without a, without work, uh, out of work, uh, I believe he should be the man. And uh, in my opinion, I just, um, I'll be honest with you, I don't really like making predictions, but the, the way I see things right now, I just am not convinced Arsenal could win a trophy like the FA Cup and, or the Europa League. And I'm not convinced Arsenal can finish in the top four after seeing, you know, Liverpool and Man City, and then, you know, the likes of Leicester, Tottenham, Manchester United turning a corner. Uh, I just cannot see them making, um, getting that level of success under any manager right now. So maybe it would make sense to wait for, um, wait for the summer and see if Allegri could join up instead of going for, uh, for, for some kind of risk like Arteta and Marcelino. And then, you know, finding ourselves in the same spot. And by that time, Allegri might have found a job. So Allegri might not be available until then. So if, if Ljungberg doesn't show something more tonight at West Ham, then I'm just going uh, I to, feel, I feel like there's going to be this feeling that, you know, it's just the team cannot do it. The team just cannot do it. They cannot push towards a, a better position in the league. They cannot push for a trophy outside of the Premier League. Uh, so we're going to have to see. Um, the, we're going to have to see tonight. And maybe the answer is uh, uh, maybe we're just going to have to wait until the summer for the uh, permanent appointment, see what the uh, situation is with Allegri. Great stuff. Gosnadinos, you said you don't like making predictions. I'm going to ask you for your prediction uh, ahead of the game tonight. Uh, it's West Ham United versus Arsenal. It's the Monday night football. How do you see this one going? That's a very good question. I mean, we're talking about Arsenal here. 11 wins, uh, 11, uh, 11 games without a win. Uh, worst record since 1977 in all competitions. Then you're playing against West Ham, uh, who are also struggling. Uh, Mauricio... Um, Sorry, Manuel Pellegrini is, in, uh, is under tremendous pressure. If he loses this, maybe he loses his job as well. Same goes uh, for Freddy Ljungberg. Uh, it's very difficult to predict. I mean, I like the way Arsenal uh, moved the ball against Norwich. Um, I thought that was, that was something we hadn't seen uh, during Emery's days. So they were missing that final, uh, that final pass. 
Uh, but then again, they were playing against Norwich, a team that's almost likely going to um, struggle, going to fight for uh, survival at the end of the season. Then we had the Brighton game where they played well for 20 minutes and basically got booed off the the, uh, the stadium by their own home fans. Um, it's very difficult to predict. Um, uh, I feel uh, my heart says Arsenal will win, and probably you know that could elevate uh, morale a little bit and just end this preposterous winless streak. But I don't know. My my, my brain says uh, says draw. Maybe a draw tonight. Okay, great stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you. I'm gonna go with a draw as well. Um, that's what I'm going to do. Yes, we're both sitting on the fence, but there you go. Um, <laughs> that brings us to the end of this short edition of the podcast. My huge thanks uh, to Costandinos Llanos. Costandino, how can people follow you on social media and keep up with your brilliant work? Well, I mean, they could, uh, I, I, as you said, I work for the uh, Daily Express, uh, where I cover uh, football and, of course, uh, WWE. And they could uh, reach me on at Llanos Costas on Twitter for more for, for more content. Brilliant stuff. And we'll be putting that in the description as well for those of you uh, who uh, want to just click on the link. It makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? Uh, my big thanks to Costas and my thanks to every single one of you guys for tuning in uh, to this edition of the podcast. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe, like, share buttons. And if you're listening via the audio platform, please, please do leave us a review. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow morning uh, looking back at the West Ham game, win, lose or draw. Uh, so please stay tuned and uh, we'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. Until then, ciao. Thanks, Harry.